settles in. Change 
About the time I say that, then something else pops up that I overlooked a line item. It's like, well, how come you have a thousand dollars there? <laughs> but so um, that one's pretty much holding the way it has been. Um, so then, to get planning zoning, please, please, probably the work for a small set. Um, this got much smaller once the um, salaries and all the insurance and all that stuff was pulled out of it. Um, and so we, Troy and I were talking earlier today, we may end up figuring out how to kind of absorb this into a uh, one of the other funds, depending on how things go, just because it's um, pretty, excuse me, pretty generic and um, without the other stuff in there, it's a, it's a fairly small um, fund that probably could could be combined with something else, but we'll we'll see and cross that bridge next year. Um, moving on to streets, okay. unless there was something else there that I missed. There is, and you're right. I mean, we established that flood works fund initially a couple years ago. We did it. It's mainly to put the, the public salaries and benefits primarily in one section, but since we're doing that town wide now, we'll probably uh, there's not much to it. I mean, we could always pull it in with building and grounds, and just kind of they do run together. That's pretty much similar to one another. Yeah. It, so mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Streets is always a good one because that's usually uh, when we start spending some money in the toilet. Um. We, we did, I'm trying to look what my line item there is. We did hold the line um, with the same amount for engineering services. Um, we're assuming that we'll have some involved with that, but since we don't, uh, I mean, because of the Reynolds Avenue project, part of that uh, project, the engineering costs will be rolled into that somewhat. But uh, we, we just, uh, it always seems like we've got something where we're working on like this with 32 and a half north of the lagoon where we ended up needing to have the engineers get that drawn up so that we had the right uh, we could get the survey done and get everything staked back to where it needed to be since uh, martin marietta was pulling it all out for us which they did get done today but uh, <laughs> um, so we're we're holding the line there uh typical of uh, maintenance of condition a hundred thousand dollars in there um, the the one line item that's significant in here is the public works capital items. Um, the not CM. I was like, Troy, what is that? Not CMAC. And that's <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> because change that CMAC's not done. Yeah, I was going to say we don't get that anymore. But the the fifty thousand uh, dollars in the streets fund, we're looking at a new backhoe next year, and we're looking at splitting that between the streets because we use it. Um, on streets uh, for snow and ice removal, we use it for filling our de-icers when we're when we're sanding in the winter time during snowstorms, um, and then we're you'll also see a portion of the new backhoe listed in um, water and sewer as well. Um, we're we're setting aside about one hundred and thirty thousand um, for the piece of equipment plus some additional. Um, uh, like a compactor that would go on the end of it that we could, uh, with a quick connect type change, um, there were, I'm trying to remember, we also are getting a uh, hydraulic thumb attachment with it. Um, and one of the things that me didn't get last year on theirs that they said would, they strongly recommended that we get is called the right stabilization so that you don't mount your fillings out of your teeth as you go down the road with the thing because we do road it quite a bit from the cemetery to the shop to the lagoon to other areas like that and so they just factored that in I that one didn't have a specific line item add but it was something that they and I don't know exactly what the right stabilization but the guys at Mead said their new machine last year did not have it, and it will rattle your brains out going from one site to the other, they said. So, 
Um, so uh, the, the quote that they gave us was around uh, 120 with the options, somewhere right in there. Um, it was almost 200 retail, and then with the, with the other discounts associated with it. Um, they did tell us that they weren't overly interested in a trade on our existing host, so we'll um, probably just have to market that ourselves after afterwards. I mean, we had a, had a $135, $138,000 bid from Caterpillar, and it was around 117 or 120 from John Deere. So um, those are just budgetary numbers. When we actually get the bid numbers, we'll see if they change at all. But um, from the, from what Troy and I were talking about today, between the the items, we we were um, we went ahead and set aside about 130 to make sure we had enough to get what we needed to. There's also 40. You'll see here a little bit 40 in sewer, 40 in water, and then 50 in here to make the 130 total because the backhoe is is split between different uses. So that's how we, we justify that. They weren't interested in taking a that brand new pickup truck and trade with it. Didn't ask. Oh, you didn't ask, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, so maintenance and conditioning, mm -hmm. we budgeted 350000 this year, and it looks as though we need half of it, or we're not getting bigger than half of it. What we didn't do is we didn't do some chip sealing because we froze a lot of the projects when COVID hit. Okay. So we're kind of picking up the slack now. Right now, the NFS I'm estimating the 80,000 the order proof for street patching, which is about done. And then a couple of contracts for one is for the engineering design for Reynolds Avenue, which is a survey because we have a CDOT grant to build a new sidewalk on the vision from Reynolds to Grant for Goodrich, I mean. And then uh, we also had a contract for 13,000 for the engineering surveying design part portion three and a half. So that's why I've kind of lumped into this. Uh, so is there <coughs> projects that should have been done this year that weren't involving and we need to do a little catch up next year if it's that's tomorrow night. I I kinda of rolled some in talking to David into tomorrow night's proposal to the board to get caught up. So we want to keep maintaining our annual street fund. As far as maintaining our streets, because we started a cycle <coughs> back in 2012 when we started the street fund program. So this year we should have uh, chip sealed all of Bella Vista and then both sides of the main street from Vasquez's provisions all the way down. We didn't get that done. We did some patching. But I do have that proposed for next spring. It's typically a spring summer project, but once fall hits, we don't do it. Is that <laughs> so that's. So where's that? I mean, is that part of that hundred thousand dollar budget, or is there going to be an additional? It'd be additional. Hundred thousand is is what we typically budget just for town wide street patching, but a lot of times we don't use it all. So the the additional street patching and repair, we're going to talk about capital projects tomorrow night. I'll be asking the board tomorrow night. I want to show you the capital improvement plan, of what I'm proposing for projects, and I'll tell you right now that's pretty much the entire total good for Reynolds Avenue to finish phase two. So you have a list for us, and I, then we'll decide what we together what we want to prioritize, yep. and then plug it in here. Yep, I do. Um, <coughs> I give you, I give you a sneak peek. Tomorrow, there's streets that proposals I'm going to give you, sidewalks, parks, public facility discussion. Back to the fleet vehicle, <coughs> sewer system. So I have a fairly straightforward proposal tomorrow night. Chip sealing is on there. But with the chip sealing, was that streets fund that that would be coming out of? So we're we'll right. adding it. Correct. Right. So, so to answer your question, Mr. Calvert, we would be adding some more to that tomorrow night. Just get the board so choose. Part of the capital projects. Uh, is it, you know, it can, all funds can be sense to be used for capital projects, even wire sewers, depending on the type of capital project. So we get to capital projects, we want to set our basic operating budget first, and then we decide what funds are available in general funds for capital projects. 
I would be asking the board tomorrow to look at using reserve funds we build up. We want to build up almost four million dollars reserve funds. At some point, you need to use them to justify why you're why you're saving. Uh, and then you have to forecast, you know, the economic uh, year that we're about to have. So uh, a little bit of a guessing game, but it's more of a guesstimate, not uh, just a wild guess. So. One thing I add to this is the bottom is the land lease, uh, the land lease for the Union Pacific. That's for Front Street. I still have not received word back from UP. I mentioned earlier in the year that they sent me a letter this summer that they're going to increase, they're going to triple this amount for the land lease for Union Pacific. But I rolled that negotiation into the Camera 30 project where they're going to give us right away, at least for the first half mile north of 30 along the railroad tracks. And I said, I consider it all one package deal. I don't want to pay more than I have to on Front Street. So uh, the land person I was dealing with that on the on the 100 foot lease agreement for the new South Front Street when the when the time comes, <coughs> connect me with a lady in another office, and they verbally agreed to lock this price in for the next however long. I asked for at least 20 years. This was in three years. This would have gone up to about twenty-seven thousand dollars. So I, my argument was, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. You know, you're forcing us to build a new road. See so that gives us a million bucks, but yet why are you were charging us to just maintain front or keep front street open when David and his crew maintain? So that's still pending. They promised me by the end of <coughs> next month to give me a lock-in price. So this is just a guess, eight thousand. I'm confident it'll be close to that. And then on street lighting, that's almost a pass through. Is that for the, the electric bill? Yeah, you pay under your utility <laughs> bill, street lights, and then we get charged from Excel, and then we pass it through just like trash service. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> but that's all I really had to add there. But yeah, this number here is going to be key because that. This line will be talked about tomorrow night. Well, that's why it's over 200,000 less, because we haven't put anything into it yet as far as California. <coughs> Speaking of refuse, uh, Brad Kelly did not come forward as, as per our contract every fall to ask for an increase. They, Carol and I talked about it earlier this summer, but they, they didn't bring anything for the board, so. We kept that the same. And then Dave and I this afternoon talked about cleanup weekend. Sorry, I just took my that's right. Um the current expenditures um, for cleanup days. <coughs> that's the projected number. The twenty twenty year to date is ten thousand five fifty two. I think the current, the new number is going to be closer to twenty thousand. We we're about ninety one hundred bucks on what we call that of there, this fall cleanup things. But the fall cleanup there was way extra, right? Not it. Well, yes, in that there were six, sorry, um, six additional dumpsters that went out to the recycle center. They charged us the same whether it went to the to the trash or to the recycle center with the with the burn pile debris. Mm -hmm. So there were six additional, but I think we were only five shy of what we did this spring <laughs> in in the trash. So um, so yes, those those numbers are uh, so that number is going to be close to twenty for this year. Troy and I were thinking maybe if we end up <coughs> not doing uh, if, if we end up with people actually able to get out next year <laughs> versus you know being afraid of going anywhere and staying home and just cleaning up their basements and, and doing home projects and that kind of thing kind of like we did with this COVID summer kind of thing um, then it, even if we do end up running two we're hoping to um, not go over that 15,000 mark because maybe we won't be quite as busy um, the other thing that we ran into, especially this fall, is we had people bring in a single axle 16 foot trailer that they put four by eight sheets of plywood up the sides 
and so they for 10 bucks they brought us half a dumpster worth of material and so part of what we want to look at and we'll discuss next year before we do the spring cleanup days would be how how can we fairly charge on a size is it per foot is it you know because we were trying well we have always done ten dollars per axle so if somebody comes in with a per size is what we're suggesting yeah you would put you know a pickup or eight foot trailer is about equivalent of anything from the you know, larger than eight foot to x amount of size of trailers and additional charge like Daryl Phelps he's, he's known to bring in his dump truck wheat truck full of stuff two or three loads every year David charges him a lot more than what we took you do. He agrees to because he knows he's getting He knows he's getting a good deal. deal. The kicker was when the trailer pulled in behind him that was hauling a 16-foot trailer on a single axle that was stacked twice or three times as high as what Daryl had brought his dump truck in. And Daryl knows I'm charging them 10 bucks for that single axle and I'm charging Daryl more. It, it, he had a fair argument that we need to find a, a, a more equitable way to make sure that the bigger loads pay more as they come in. Which, all I mean, I, I had residents, and by the way, the residents were very thankful that we had it this fall. Um, we had some first time people that were through there that they were like, this is great. I had one guy come in and I was like, you're only charging me 10 bucks per load? He said, I'll do this all day, every day, <laughs> you know? He says, have you been to the landfill lately? It's, it's um, like 70, 80 bucks. For a pickup load. Pick load, and if you're not covered, then they double it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And um, I mean, some of the other communities are doing things like, uh, oh, it's either Frederick or Firestone um, is opting to not do cleanup days in town anymore, but they, they send a voucher for a trip to the landfill that the landfill just sends the bill to the town. So that way their staff isn't having to handle the trash or deal with any of that. Um, so those are some ideas that have been <coughs> floated, um, and depending on what and where, uh, where our construction is at, how soon we're starting the wastewater treatment facility construction next year and that kind of thing, um, we may have to consider some options like that for this next year and then determine what we're going to do and how we're going to do it after that, depending on how, how the timing plays out. So. The $10 fee, does, it go, does that go into the general fund or and then just dig it out? Yeah. There's a line out of the general fund. Uh, not much. Uh, How close to solvent is that program? Not, not at all. Not even. It's more of a community event that we try to recoup some of our cloth. If, if we recoup 20 to 25%, Spencer, I'd be shocked. Does it help your program with that? Yeah. No, with our spring update program. So in the spring, we, we brought in a little over 1200 bucks. We paid out over ten there. So, but that goes in the general fund. I mean, each each of the 30-yard dumpsters that goes out were charged like 342 or 348, and there's a 16 or 18 dollar fuel surcharge. And then the guys are really good at compacting them to make sure we get the maximum amount in them. So we usually get hit with an overweight charge as well after they get to the landfill to dump it. So, it, but honestly, the overweight charge is less than what another dumpster would be. So I'm not too mad at the guys for compacting them down and tightening them up. So, well, but, but when you have people bring you, you know, two hot tubs that they cut up with a chainsaw. You do your best to squish it down in there, that, but that pretty much fills a dumpster right there, you know? And for well, the most part, the community honors it for what it's worth, and I think it's a benefit because for the month before both spring and fall, I have Scott or Code Oscar go out there and give a bunch of notices. They take advantage of this and of the wire for spring and for fall this weekend. It helps keep the it does. Keep the town made up. And yeah. your participation if you went to a voucher program or plumbing. It, it would because we want to drive to a landfill. Right. Plus, you want to go to all. That's all. all. Yeah. Um, there's one over Deary. Yeah, but the one at all is quite easy to get in and out of. 
someone here on 85. Yeah. And I haven't been to either one of them, so I'm not sure. <laughs> the one in the area is over like in a neighborhood. Is it really? Yeah, if you, if you watch people go, I mean, they don't really have secured loads. <laughs> they just kind of make yeah. it across town. Go down 85, I will probably do that. Yeah. So, but we'll, we'll have the conversation this, you know, prior to this pre-claim weekend. And right. Number one is, you know, what should the fees be adjusted to accordingly, which I think people would be very acceptable of that. And then number two location. So we need to see how far along we are with the wastewater plant. I'm pretty, pretty sure we're not going to have that sewer. Maybe spring, definitely yeah. not fall. Yeah. I will say oh, spring oh, if we're oh, early oh, enough, we might be able to because we won't have actually broke ground out there. But so I just put in that fifteen thousand budget number. Okay. Um, this will actually <coughs> because of you said the invoice was around ninety one hundred dollars. I think so. If I remember correctly, that's actually going to be about twenty thousand for the year. Might as well put that in there because that's what it's going to be. Right. Parks. Um, the we we really don't have any significant changes in that one. Um, we are asking for a little bit more in the grounds so that we can do some tree trimming. We've done some minor tree trimming <coughs> at the cemetery and at the parks over the years, but most of it has been mostly emergency type trimming, and we haven't really gone in and done any scheduled or planned um, trimming and uh, we've got a lot of nice trees but we had an arborist in this last summer to look at some of them for us and basically there's a lot of dead in those trees that if we get in there and get it taken care of the tree will last longer number one and number two we don't run the risk of of that dead coming down and either breaking or hurting something else or someone else, heaven forbid. Um, so we've added some money in parks and then in the cemetery fund, right, to to do some additional tree trimming, um, to have them come in with a lift truck where they can get in and, and get some of that dead out of those trees. And in some cases, we've got some trees that are mostly not very many, but we've got a few that are, are more gone than here, and so we, we need to go ahead and just get those removed before they come down. We would rather not, you know, have the football field goalpost come down as part of our adventure like the wind did on Sunday at the middle school. It's quite a few south of 66 there <coughs> that is on the town's property as from what I've discovered now. Right at 66? Probably on the closer to the bridge. Yeah, right after the bridge on the south side. Mm -hmm. A bunch of dead trees right there. Yeah, right along that ditch or where the ditch ends, basically. Right, you're correct. You get in there. So the actual budget annually is, is 25000 Like The question I have is should we add money to, to do additional tree trimming in this section of the budget? That's what I ask my question mark. So right now, the 25000 is our typical budget. We're anticipating we always spend about you know last year we spent twenty one two seventy two. We're anticipating you know an estimate about twenty two thousand this year. So the question of the board tonight on this one is do we add to this line item to add for more tree trimming in the park? That's my question. I like that ten thousand. I agree with that. Yeah. Do we need to add some more for some trees that aren't in parks too somewhere else? Or? It could be enjoyed. Yeah. We also have that money for planting too. Anything for tree um, the, the Tree City money, I think, is what you're referring to, Adrian. And yes, we, we can use part of that. And um, we, other than the, um, we really haven't done any tree planting this year, new trees. <coughs> so we actually have met with the arborist this last week to get an estimate. I think we've got 32 or 38 trees at Lincoln Park total. And I want to say 20, some of them needed some attention. And I think we're going to be able to afford to do about three or four or five of them <laughs> in there with what's left in the Tree City funds to use those up this year. We may, uh, depending on where we're at, if we've got a little bit extra, we might use some more of the, some of what was left of the 25,000 out of the MR grounds um, this year. Depending, he's supposed to get us a number, I haven't seen it yet. So. And the caveat with the 
we talked about conservation trust from last week, but the Tree City, the Tree City USA money is two dollars per cap this week, but six thousand for the population about three. Mary manages that paperwork with Tree City USA. The thing is, is with Tree City USA and correct me if I'm wrong, Mary, that money can be used for basically tree maintenance, trimming, and planting on any town-owned property. But since it's in conservation <laughs> trust, those restrictions kick in. That David Green can attest to because he deals with the conservation trust that we can't use that at the cemetery because it's not classified as a park. Mm -hmm. So we can use them in all of our parks and our green belts, but not the cemetery. So it's not the same rules. But so the Tree City USA, we try to focus on new tree planting in the parks and trimming trees in the park. That's not a lot of money. So when, when we established that years ago, we pretty much spent all of it on planting trees. Right. It can also be used on some irrigation if we need to, but correct. So well, between is expensive, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. And I mean, with the ten thousand here and the tree city money, that's about sixteen thousand. And then I think we were looking at ten thousand in the cemetery <coughs> fund as well. Yeah. But the this money could be used for some at the cemetery if we had to, but the tree city stuff can't. I mean, tree city could, but the conservation trust where we put the tree city money can't. <laughs> Is that complicated enough for you? Yeah. So, and I highlight sanitation because I asked David, you know, why are we going to be higher than your budget? And David, explain why. <laughs> um, this last, normally what we used to do was we used to pull the porta potties in the parks um, starting about October and we left them out until March or April um, until I started getting complaints from folks that the usual truck drivers and others that are used to those blue rooms being at those locations when they weren't they were still peeing behind the, the pump houses and, and um, using the facilities that weren't there so we opted to go ahead and I shouldn't just say truck drivers I mean there were people in town that were coming over especially at Lincoln Park uh, but I did get a couple of complaints at Riverview Park as well um, we always have left one at the cemetery year-round um, we don't have one at Coronado and we don't have one at Rogers Farm um, most of the most of the folks that use those two parks live close enough to run home and use their rest you know use a bathroom at the house so um, so this last year we had pulled them out and then we put them back and so that's part of why we're a little bit higher than what we had anticipated because we did go ahead and leave them at the park year round plus I think there's a five dollar per week in the wintertime winterization fee that we pay that we don't that we weren't used to paying because we hadn't been keeping them out there during the cold months so and then I highlighted this because I, I forgot to ask you that we need to assess the $3,900 to the water fund because this is basically we don't have in our parks we irrigate off wells and we can live with you but in Coronado and Rogers it's off tap water central water and what we discussed years ago is that we would essentially transfer money to the water fund because those aren't meter parks so basically we contribute from the general fund to the water fund to help offset the use of that water if that makes sense so that's just something we need to adjust, Dave. We got it before our next uh, bill for the budget final. Yes. Okay. So I think that's, that's pretty much it for parks, Rex Seniors, museums. There's not much there. So. We you know, we could absorb this in buildings and grounds, but if you sit down with museum ladies. <laughs> don't. They, there's times where they have a landscaping project, they want something done in the building, and they like to track this separately, and I'm just not going to mess with the system. So we just keep their own little section of the fund for the museum. This year, obviously, you know, they haven't been there most years, and, and we haven't done much, but ground, we, you know, we plant some, some stuff out front, we clean some stuff up. Landscaping, not so much. Uh, <coughs> it won't stay. We, we've tried to improve it over the years, and it, I don't know if it's a bad spot. Buildings, you know, it's been tagged over the years. Um, that door, if you notice, there's still some blotches on that door to the old fire station where you go to the fire truck. Because the kids tagged years ago, and the plug work came about. Um, 
place the light bulb from what's driven, you just lift out and replace the bulb around the top. It's just stuff like that. One year we painted all the windows, the window trims, so pretty basic. And the insurance and bonds are taken out of this for the budget, just like every place else. So that's why it's left. We don't have that budgeted. Is that insurance? Yeah. It's in the administration section. Oh, that's right. <coughs> oh, yeah. Excuse me, which is why that one's called. Yeah, it, it does the plan. It's as well in sewer and water, too. Yeah. So right now, the general fund alone, as of tonight, for basic operations, my said you think like free training. Yeah. Uh, revenues or expenditures, about 245000 <coughs> So with the fund balance, it's almost $4 million total. So that's going to be more the most of the conversation for me. So going to special revenue fund, uh, the library, Cemetery day, and yeah. the first one we come to. Revenues I typically do throughout the budget. Um, as you can see, this year we've had more lot sales and open and close fees, but it's a guessing game. Uh, still staying pretty conservative for next year unless you want me to in change that increase. It. <laughs> if it wasn't for this 50,000 years ago, we decided to lease against least uh, to the water fund for the water to the two water tanks up there this fund would be broke mm -hmm. after we broke oh, my what's that my yeah it actually worked out pretty well on it like the reason by the way right now i don't want to increase that because the water fund is water and sewer is not real great right now you love the family use of water so the cemetery there's still the salary and wages, along with the water and sewer funds. Okay? Um, we treat those a little differently. So going down to operations, starting with probably uniform. Okay. Yeah. Um, there again, <coughs> we, we pretty much have held the line, um, with the exception uh, of, um, well, the the twenty-five thousand dollars down there under the capital for this year, um, that that was uh, laying out the new portion of the cemetery, platting the eastern side up there. We're actually meeting tomorrow morning with the engineering firm. They got the survey done, so now we're going to meet with them about kind of how we want to start to design that, so that they they they've got the survey and they've got a, a an electronic version of it, so we can start to draw in and change dimensions and try to figure out how things will fit and what will fit. Um, we're going to change the size of the, uh, 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 of the burial plots just a little bit to give us enough room that um, if a husband and wife uh, have bought a plot together and one of them passes and the other chooses to go ahead and put a stone up at that time, but it's a, it's a stone for both of them then right now everything's so tight that we have to remove that stone when the other one passes so that we have enough room to do the, the burial. So we would like to leave enough room to actually have enough room for the headstone and then still have room for the burial and be able to do that without having to have our crews moving those headstones and that kind of thing. So there's some dimension sizes. I mean, the current spaces right now, there are 12 spaces or 12 lots per space. We'll probably keep that just to stay uniform with it, but we're going to increase the size of the lots just a little bit and the size of each space so we've got some room in there to, to deal with some of that. So um, we, we're going to meet with the engineers tomorrow about laying that out. We're hoping that uh, we can get that laid out and figured out. Tree rows, irrigation, roadways, if, if you know there there's quite a slope to that piece of it so do we do any kind of small retain or retaining walls with a stair stepped type situation i don't know there's a lot of things that we're going to kick around and try so we're hoping we're hoping that that gets finished before the end of the year but we don't know for sure if it will um even if we get the plan all put together before the end of the year uh, then we'll have to start to budget and figure out how to you know, when are we going to start to actually build that and lay that out and that kind of thing. Um, but the 10000 for next year, isn't that the trees? Yeah. So so we went ahead and, and put a $10,000 uh, 
number in there to, to as we've already discussed the tree trimming, but that's that's where we put it for that's next year. For snow trimming, to clarify, this is okay green does when I put the accounting description in green, that means it changed the title. So, and we don't really want to change the titles very often because it's really a pain for Dave to change that in the assist or, or Mary. So, the mowing contract. Not the biggest issue with the capital outlay. The capital outlay was specifically in the budget listed as survey and plan. So what I'm going to ask Dave Green to do in the next year is when you get your financials, and basically he's done this for me already, do a separate spreadsheet of all our capital projects and what funds they're allocated to. And as they get spent, you'll just have a separate simple spreadsheet to show, okay, what was that twenty-five thousand in capital outlay in the the spreadsheet will show what the specific project was for. So basically we're trying to get to where everything's it's called capital projects. And mostly in the capital improvement fund, you'll see 760,000 capital projects. Well, that's four projects. I have a separate spreadsheet that I track. So I track every individual project and you can as well. So uh, it's just, it's the biggest reason is it's, it's a pain for Dave to change that in, in the system. Year in, year out, every time we change the name. And then additionally, too, um, so that spreadsheet doesn't expire either, right? So it, it just moves. We do maintain a full listing of fixed assets that go back 50 years, um, and we depreciate those. So we can still, if you guys have a question two years from now, how much do we spend for X? We can still e very, very easily track that down as to exactly what it was for that specific item. Like with uh, the election this year, mail in. Election. Well, that's general fund, not capital project, right. but yeah. So, yeah, so that would only go for a capital project. But I say, for instance, you bought a election box and set up it online, mm -hmm. and that rose in the capital level, then yes, we would go three years from now, and that's how much that cost. Okay. So, the cemetery was increased uh, slightly, about $5,000 total. main thing is in the cemetery fund there's money taken out and Dave that's why I want to look, look into this in this spreadsheet didn't show anything that was budgeted well okay look at that tomorrow yeah it could I'll look at that it could be due to the account number changes from something in that's right so that's why I want to make sure we put this I'm sure there would have been something budgeted for the moment the first full year of the software so just make sure all the connections are correct Conservation Trust, we talked about it. It's very simple. Uh, it's 30,000 annually on, on lottery, and it's based upon a population. It's kind of increase the USA so that, that number really doesn't go up unless our population grows. That's how the state allocates those lottery funds. Now, I would, would wonder how much that's going to go down next year. Because uh, the reason I say that is that with COVID and staying home, people haven't been going to lottery. Um, yeah, there's the spending issue too as well. Mm -hmm. So it's all based on how much people are spending. If you see any of this stuff, it's kind of what that's going to be. Should we do a Go Gamble campaign? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. um, in this budget book, I have ground maintenance in the cemetery as 13000 uh, 13, 13, So you just finish up on the Very to ground maintenance instead of mowing contract. Okay. So, thank you. track 
what those reserves funds are in those accounts. I like that. So that way, yeah, we're we're spending sixteen, but we actually have fifty nine thousand seven hundred one in there, roughly. The LA fund, same thing. The Carl's Law Enforcement Fund is actually built up. This is the most it's ever been, so that's why I'm pretty comfortable with what Carl did. You know, trying to spend a lot of money. Harvest days we talked about. You and I re revisit this tonight, or do you wait till tomorrow? We talked about whether it's going to be our 145th or 150th year. What should we do? <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it? Well, I don't know. Depends on when it was founded, when it was platted or uh, incorporated. incorporated. So. <clears throat> what do we do? Is it a big one? The one that was the harvest days hundred. Hundred at the actual harvest days or pickle days or whatever. So uh, right now it's pretty much the same as what we, we had. I took out miscellaneous, but otherwise, you know, having a couple bands next year, it's just hard to predict. Yeah. But <coughs> the fund actually is sitting pretty well. It has thirty thousand reserve for the fund balance. So. We can revisit tomorrow. Okay. Which one will be the 150th year? <laughs> What's that? Either next year or five years from next year. Okay. Well, okay. Which one would be the plotted year or plotted or incorporated or established? Because I would think established. Yeah, I, I, I've seen both numbers. So, like, eight or seven of logo is 1876. And then you can Google kind of plot though. It'll show 1871 when it was found. So, I would say a trip to visit with the museum lady should clear that right up. There you go. Are you volunteering yourself? I did not. He's going to stop by tomorrow lunch. <laughs> He's going to be the experts. Mm -hmm. So I scroll to the couple from the front side. We'll have to be the focus tomorrow. I'll be the person we talk about. Uh, so I have more to, to present tomorrow on that and then end up with solid wages, which we typically do. Mm -hmm. So the two enterprise funds are the last two for tonight, which is sewer and water. Um, Dave and I had a, a pre-meeting this afternoon and uh, people aren't using as much water this year, it appears to be, but uh, the upkeep charges aren't there what we anticipated. They're going to actually be a little lower than the 565. And I worked with Devin yesterday and I asked her to pull up what her monthly average was. Because their upkeep charges are your base rates. That doesn't change. And her population and her property occupancy isn't changing. So basically, I overestimated revenues for this year, what it comes down to. If you go back, um, 2019, which this doesn't show, it was over 100,000 less. So the 53% that you approved in early 2019, um, and then going into this year, I mean, right now we're looking at about 520,000. So the one thing David and I talked about was the sewer fund that, that fiscal analysis we did with the wastewater plan. You approved the 53%, which was proposed. One, which is one of the options. Otherwise, it was like three years of 18% increases, which we opted not to do that. But you, you have to increase the sewer fund up to 2% annually to maintain that operations expense. So next month, actually in December, depends on what we're married. Because it's an ordinance, so it takes 30 days to go into effect. So I'm going to be presenting to the board a resolution to increase water and sewer rates and base rates by 1 to 2%. Is what? Did hmm? we just do that? Mm -hmm. We do it annually. How long ago did we do it? Uh, it was like about two years ago. Yeah, I thought it was like September of last year. Was it one or two years? I don't know. Okay, I'll check. I just don't remember that. Uh, go look on next door. You'll I was just going to say, I would check next door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious how it should logically be possible that people are using less water when you've had water bills that have been 
How are the hottest years on record, folks? So why do you want? Everybody's been home. People staying at home. <laughs> unless, I mean, the only thing you can explain that way is beer sales have gone up. So is everybody drinking, you know, liquor and beer instead of water? Well, well people are at home. Also, people are at home because jobs. Well, you know, so it goes both ways. You have here at home, so. But I've heard a lot of people not water, watering as much because their income is not so much either. So it goes both ways. I mean, I, I for one, I really want my whole Even though it's hot, I always joke, and it's, and it's a serious joke, it's a shade of green. It's not bright green because I barely water enough to keep my grass from dying. So, my choice. You know, plus, the kids, neighbor kids, kept all down anyway. So. And the kids, anyhow. I know. So the. the I want to highlight that, point that out, that it's actually going to be closer to 520. And then the grant, uh, we have a $200,000 dollar grant. I confirmed with Simon and Farrell at JVA that they're going, they're under contract for about 121000 to do the 30% of the design for this wastewater. That's pretty much what they're going to finish up doing this year. So I'm trying to work on the budget. So next year, they'll complete the rest of that basically five hundred fifty thousand dollar design. So that's why uh, I split the grant up the revenue side the way I did for what I think we'll get by the end of this year, and what I hope we'll get in twenty twenty one about two hundred thousand. And it's a guessing game. The numbers won't be exact. Mm -hmm. and David Green Smith's those reimbursements once I get them from JVA. So, expenditures, going back down to, all the salaries and benefits basically the same. I mean, David Green adjusted the work comp and property casualty the board approved with SIRSA. Um, I, sent, I think I sent you the health insurance increase, didn't I? It was like four, wasn't very four point. There's it wasn't a whole lot. Oh, but one point nine. One point nine percent, and then so that was very small. From the sewer fund, if you go down to operations, again the admin fee is fees from the library, water, sewer, cemetery that's billed or paid back to the ad, the general fund administration for. Uh, maintaining operations for accounting and bookkeeping. The accounting line I made us, I, I lowered it because I'll propose next to, to the board. I'm going to tell you a problem, I'm going to ask for a change of accounts, accounting firm. And no matter the two that you may decide on, the budget will go down because the cost will go down. And that's on the audit firm, not the, the accountant. Uh, it's called accounting audit. This is uh, well, why well, I feel like he was just sitting right. here <laughs> and sitting here talking about switching accounts. And I'm like, hey, that's messed up. Surprise! Yeah. So if you go so for the auditor, that's a good way to break the news to him. Contract <laughs> account is Mr. Green. <clears throat> and there it has froze his salary for the last four years. I appreciate that. At least he didn't tell him. Yeah, I haven't I changed. I don't think I've changed it since I started here. Mm -hmm. What, four or five years? Yeah. Um, the, uh, the two most significant, right there at the bottom, well, they were until he rolled up there. The, uh, the engineering, 430,000, that's, that's part of the the 550 that we're anticipating from JVA between the design, engineering, and, and dealing with the new wastewater treatment facility. And then the capital outlay of 40,000 there is the, uh, um, the portion out of the sewer fund towards the new backhoe that we're considering. So uh, other than that, we pretty much held the line. I went up just slightly on the testing just because their fees have gone up a little bit. and. And we have to continue to do that testing that we have to provide. So the forty thousand that the other portion of the back. Yeah. So okay. other than that, um, the uh, yeah, 
I really don't have anything else that's significant in there right now. I mean, <laughs> we're going to be having some huge significant changes over the next few months uh, in, in year out there. But uh, uh, we go to bid, or the RFP for the 30% design with the construction manager at risk, the CMAR process, uh, gets advertised Thursday and those bids are due back November 4th. Um, we are, what is it, November 20, no, October 21st is the pre-bid, I think. That sounds about right, a week from tonight, a week from today. Um, so, or a week from tomorrow, I guess. Um, the, uh, so JVA's got a very aggressive schedule with, with the CMAR process. Um, we expect by the second meeting in November to present a contractor and a proposal to the board um, for us to move forward with. So, so the super good I, outside of pretty much benefits and side small stuff. This is the meat of our operation the sewer again here. Right now, the big expense, unlike normal years, is your is your design for the new facility. But there's a massive capital outlay here. M and R systems. Equipment, buildings, utilities. Uh, those are those are going to be your bigger ones. And you'll see these numbers change once that new mechanical system goes online. Your utilities, our utilities alone, will probably increase significantly because mechanical system. Are we planning to try to offset that with some solar? It's my it's my hope and intent if we decommission those those two lagoons that we can at least use one of them for some solar farms. I, I've read articles about that, some of these small towns up in like Nebraska and Iowa, which go from the lagoon system to mechanical. They'll put solar arrays, you know, near those and help offset those electrical problems. <coughs> Wasn't there something at Watkins when you guys went out there? Wasn't there something out there too? I don't I didn't see any dude, did you? No. Not at Watkins, I don't think so. Are they the ones that put grass on the roof? Yes, yeah. okay, that's with the that's solid was, roof. <laughs> and I hadn't figured out how they were going to get the mower up there yet. You need to you right here to the mower. Yeah. If we incorporate those panels into the, the, the whole design of the plant. Yeah, we talked to JV about looking into that. Yeah. The buildings that we have, maybe some solar panels on top of them. I was afraid that if it doesn't get done, then it will get put on the back burner and not have to. You know what I mean? And all these big part of this plant, so we set this next board up so that you feel the payment is astronomical. And I don't know how that, I don't, I'm not knowledgeable enough about discounts with Excel and solar and how that works as far as, you know, residentially that's pretty simple. Right. Commercial and industrial, that's a whole different ballgame. So I need to try to. I can give you some information on an engineer that does that, um, but I can track that down and get that okay. data again. Years ago, the library had a contract. They put the library ones on theirs, and they actually, you know, get revenue every year off of that one. We just break costs or utilities, but that's a lot more power than libraries. Yeah. Well, we have a lot more area. We do. We do. And the technology has increased. So yeah. Very much. I just don't know how that the the legality on how that works because Excel gives out to these different companies basically these contracts of how much they could sell to offset the cost of electricity basically is simply simplified uh, what, what they tell me. So it's, uh, I just told them about it. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line of the sewer fund is it's, with the engineering design, it's broke. <laughs> but we knew it would be for a while. Okay. One thing I thought today, today is it'll be two years ago this this December where we, we put that, that water. The fun, the, there's a, I don't know the detail of that specific amount, but we put a large chunk of the water fund, the sewer fund reserves, the perpetual care, and that two year bond. Mm -hmm. Peaks and less and bad. But that matures in December. Mm -hmm. So one thing we need to talk about here relatively soon is. Uh, if we're not going to reinvest that, and I, I don't know, Larry, have you ever seen rates lately on bonds? If it's worth reinvesting, or we probably need to just keep pulling out for the call trust. I was, I might be yeah, on the spot there. But. What's the current rate from the Colorado trust? You know? Yeah, it fluctuates daily, so it's hard to tell. Right? Well, right. Um, 
it's, it's right around a percent, I think. It might be less. Uh, I just, I, I can't answer that. I just calculated, but I can't remember it for sure. Okay. It was less than one percent, though. Um, and those bottom bonds here, I think, at three point oh five and three point one zero percent. That's what well, yeah, you're not going to get anywhere near that, given the constraints of the state law about what you can invest in. Uh, well, the reason I'm bringing it up is we have to probably show that as money back in. No, it's, being sh it's being shown in those fund balances. In the fund balances, it is. But what about the interest, though? Would that be a revenue? The interest would be a revenue, yes. But the actual return of principal would not. No, it would be in this fund balance right here. Yeah. Okay. And that's the question I had is, as we let those mature we, and we don't reinvest. So we accrue the interest as it goes. So it's not like we pull in all three years of interest into the income. So you pull it in? I've been pulling it in for the last two years. Okay, a portion of it, yeah. So if I go back up to revenue then, investment fees, that's what that's coming from? Earnings on investment. So be earnings on investment, sorry. I don't know what that's investment fees. Oh, that's gotta be, investment fees, that's your tap fee. Um, oh yeah, that's right. On investment. We have it's earnings on investments. Okay, but so that's, that's from the investment itself. That's from the CDs and what's in college trust. Okay, yeah, it's a combination. I know for sure. Yeah, which I think most of the money is in college trust. There's a, there is a portion of CDs, and most of it's in college trust. But I do book it every year, a third of that or whatever the amount is. Yep. Yeah. Good enough. What kind of general question on this thing? So Right now we're running the fund balance real well, right? But we're also putting a lot of the capital expense for the plant into this. So let's say you know, the fund wasn't solved. We could take money out of the general fund or that reserve fund to do the capital project to help build the sewer plant. No. We have to keep no. the... You can only put 10% of your revenues in the sewer fund because it's an enterprise fund. Right. It's and capped at how much you can do with grants and general fund and all of that stuff. And we've done that, Spencer. We have a half million set aside in color trust, Mark Sewer in Reserve. And I fully intend on applying that half million toward the new wastewater facility to, to cut that cost up. That'll be part of that 10% that we all know how to use. Yeah. And what kind of scared me a little bit when I talked to Dolex, we submitted that one million dollar grant application, which are our loan, our bond will basically be our match. We don't have to come up with any more cash. Of that $15 million available, that's typically mostly state funds. Well, you can't use state funds to offset a grant for revenue on an enterprise fund because it violates enterprise funds. So that $15 million, $2 million are federal mineral lease money. Is it federal mineral lease money? So that million dollar application that we submitted to DOLA, we're applying for the $2 million portion of the 15 because then it won't violate an enterprise so it's, it's just a game it's a gamble currently we don't do we use any of the 10 percent that we're allowed to <laughs> so we, we have some leeway there let's say it goes you know things start getting bad because you know, that's not a good number there, right we, i was just trying to think of a way i expect the, sure. the next two years to be very hard on this fund but then it'll gradually get better right you want to spend four hundred thirty thousand dollars? No, our annual payments. I'm not sure what they'll be, but they better not be four hundred thirty thousand dollars. We still have to, we still have to get that from, and that that'll be take your thirty year, forty year bond, or twenty thirty year bond. But it was one to three percent interest uh, on a hopefully a five and a half million dollar facility. When Dave and I met with JV a, a couple weeks ago, they're because it cost of concrete mainly. Cost of concrete's gone up between 30 and 40 percent for yeah. setting it. So they're estimating maybe close to closer to seven million dollar project. I said, ah, figure it out. We need to have five and a half million dollar project. It, it's being bid to the CMAR in a 4.9 million dollar project. Yeah. So, so hopefully we <coughs> get bid this like we did with but, the detention bond. But in JVA's defense, that 6.8 that they came in with the other day had a $700,000 contingency built into it as well because they're still at such an upper level that they haven't been able to narrow the numbers. 
So in reality, if you take their contingency out of it, it's a it's a 6.2. So it's it's higher than our 5.5, but it's not that much higher than our 5.5. But but yes, the, the the biggest significant cost was a 30 to 40 percent. The the concrete has jumped from 700 a yard to between 1,000 and 1,100 a yard. And Unfortunately, you don't get to build a wastewater treatment facility without some significant concrete basins <laughs> that go into that. So, well, let's move on from compressing sewer time. That's just reality of a living in the uh, Same on the upkeep charge. David, I want to talk to you maybe later this week about where we're sitting on uh, our base rates for the water fund. Make sure there's not it. The way Dev explained to me today is unlike most of the revenue, like the water and sewer the utility bills, they're, they're in the rear basically. Like your utility bill that went out was dated October 1, so it's actually for September. It would be September usage. Exactly, so we're a month further behind than typically we are in other expenditures. I think I, I just went through all the minutes from last year and it was, was like February 19th, <coughs> for 2018. <coughs> we, are, we did an increase. I thought it was February or January. I didn't think it was the summer. Yeah. It's typically toward the first of the year mm -hmm. or the end of the year because it takes 30 days for <coughs> right, so theoretically in January we would have had the public hearing, right? If it went into effect in February, it's probably in late December. Late December, because it's 30 days, right? So it's approved by ordinance, isn't it, right? Yeah. No? Um, is it just a change to the fee schedule? Just change the fee schedule, so it's going to affect the same amount. Yeah, it was 2019-205, uh, or 2019-02. Great, so we've been our second resolution of the year. 05, sorry. It was in 2019? Yes. So it would only come up on two years now. Yeah. Yeah, so resolution actually is 2019-04, resolution of board of trustees, town level, and I mean town's fee schedule, water and wastewater usage and base rates, credit card service fees, and police department fees. Did it say how much the rate was increased? Was? No, it doesn't tell me in the minutes. No, yeah, what does it say? What's the date on that? January 15th. So that's when the board approved the 53%. Yes. Another one, 2% on both. After that, so this is January. Okay, I just need to research that. I just don't remember that. No, they're not happy about it. You just raised them. Want to raise them again? People are not happy about this. We don't do it every year. Yeah, yeah I have to do it every year, else we're not going to maintain these, these facilities. The way I told people, and we went told your stretch, we can increase water and sewer time. No increases whatsoever. That guy's in the mind. So you have to at least maintain the one to two percent annually. Water fund. Um, like check these earnings on investment here, David. Um, I don't know. I don't remember how much of the water fund or the water revenues or reserve. Funds were invested. Um, most of it was sewer. And there's a hundred thousand perpetual care we invested in that. They're all kind of lumped together in those bonds. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and the reason I say people are, are watering less is electric consumption, and I just notice those numbers way down. How about a, a gallon? You know how many gallons we were charged for and how many we actually did? We can. I didn't pull it up, though. David can probably find that because we get billed. Okay. We get billed. I'm not seeing. We would have increased the fees during the COVID. I yes. don't remember at all this year, unless it was the very beginning of the year. Yeah, I don't see it. I've looked we should have increased it at the beginning of 2020. Well, I remember having 
this discussion, I mean, we had done the significant raise the beginning of 2019. So last year towards, the, you know, probably October of last year, we're having this discussion at that point. For some reason, I was thinking that the water fund, and I'll, I'll have to go find something to back this up. For some reason, I was thinking we did a 1% of the water fund and we didn't do anything in the sewer for 2020. Well, because we had something but decreased, then, our charges were decreased, and so we... And I, I don't remember what it was. I know, I, Spencer, I know that we had a discussion, and I know that um, you just mentioned it, that you were frustrated then that we were doing it. it, it and I think that we compromised and we came to, it, it, because the, the fee schedule, or the, um, not the fee schedule, the, uh, um, when they look at all our fees, I can't remember what, what I'm drawing the rates. The rate study had recommended at a minimum of a 1%, but a 1% to 2% per year per fund. And um, for some reason, I was thinking we either only did 1% or we only did 1% in one fund, and I don't remember what that was for sure. So we'll have to... You're just trying to muddy the waters now, aren't you? Where did you pull the resolution the last time we increased the water sewer? Can you do that for me? Because I want to, before we leave tonight, I want to make sure we're on the same page. I, I just believe we typically do the first month or two of the year, and I remember doing it. I can remember both funds, but I definitely remember the phone code was in January 2020. So we went on our regards. We could have easily done it in January. Well, I just went through all the and so we did it. So okay. let me check again. I went through the agenda. The good and bad thing about enterprise funds is, you know, they're, they're supposed to be self-sustaining, but if people don't use those services, then you lose the revenues to offset, and you can't pay for the expenditures to consider maintenance of operations. I'm confused on consumption. You're saying that we're not using as much, but then it's increasing over this next year. Well, is that my budget is wrong. This number I still have to adjust. But I want to check these numbers because this this is based upon three more months percentage of increases, but there's actually four. This number is going to change. So I sorry I should explain that. So I need to look at that number better with the degree. So you got a couple more months of this year to, to add into that. It's the hotter months too. So you know, that's probably Troy's on that word, that might be a little bit misleading based on how we're anticipating. Yeah. It's just a calculation. So I'll take a look at that tomorrow. I'll have a better answer. That both of these for the water and the sewer. And well, they do say that with low people replacing their taps and their toilets and their shower heads. That consumption is as far as you go down. It's supposed to be a trend, right? So the conservation is the problem. Yeah. That was in 2019. It's, it's certainly surprising. It sounds crazy because of how hot it's been. Yeah. I don't know. My water bill is certainly not right now. No. <clears throat> what I'm. Uh, it's, a, it's a dilemma for every town that if water's not used, if we don't grow, as far as population and bring in more more buildings, more water use. Um, we're trying to push water conservation. Essentially the water sewer fronts, the revenues will, will be enough to offset basic operations in both. For my fear is that we have to cap the projects we have to do. We need, we need to use David, I was talking this afternoon, we have water lines we need to start first. Yeah. You know, we did one rental that's a specific road project, but we don't have money to go in the water fund to build water line. So that's going to be a long conversation. As far as expenditures, David was talking about the two biggest costs in the water fund because we don't create our own water, we buy it. It is our demand charge from Central and our treated water purchase. And our demand, um, we did 
did receive some letters this year. Our demand has been decreased a little bit, but our treatment has been increased a little bit based upon the numbers that they give us, the cost that they give us. So I don't have a budget with me, but that's why I have mm -hmm. uh, So the demand charter kept about the same. I did increase the water treatment purchase a little bit, but uh, I still need to take a closer look at that. It's probably too high, but again, I want to see what the numbers are with Central. The rest, sorry. Sorry, we did another fee schedule adjustment in 2019, resolution 2019-39 in December. And, but it looks like it's code fees. Yeah. So we did those changes in the water sewer rates and the fee, but not every fee increase or fee structure increase right. involves water sewer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From the waterfront, there's a land lease for 50000 to the cemetery. We budgeted 25000 annually for water meters. Do you anticipate buying some more next year, David? Yeah. We don't have the whole town new meters yet. No, we're we're getting close to having the whole town on the remote readers where we've got the radio reads, but now a lot of those original radio read meters are at their twelve to fifteen year shelf life. So um, the <clears throat> excuse me, that's about a hundred uh, approximately a hundred meters a year for that twenty five thousand because they're $250 to $270 per, per meter. So um, we've been doing a pretty good job of getting somewhere between 80 and 100 meters per year replaced and updated throughout the system. Um, it's interesting, we're starting to see two to four meters per month in the Rogers Farm subdivision, in the original part of the Rogers Farm subdivision that went in <clears throat> excuse me, in the early 2000s, we're starting to see those meters die off two to, two to four of them per month where the batteries are just going dead and we're not able to get the reading from them anymore. And unfortunately on those, um, I'm not sure why my predecessors allowed um, Jim Plum when he was building the homes to actually put the meters in the basement instead of in a meter pit in the yard where we can access them. So, uh, I can go and mess with the batteries. Yeah, that's right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so so then we have to it, it it normally changing a meter out is a one guy deal where we can just go out pop the top on the lid and get down in there swap it out and be done with it but we can't um, you know for safety reasons security reasons and to make sure that we don't have any kind of impropriety of any sort we have to send two guys to make sure and then then we have to schedule with a property owner to get into their home and then we're having to track into their home some of them are finished basements, some of them aren't, you know, and, and that kind of thing. So, right. So the replacement meters are still inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At this point, we haven't been popping them into a meter pit outside because um, the added expense and um, I haven't double checked the code, but I don't think we can ask the property owner to do that. I mean, we could ask nicely, but I don't think we have any time right. to enforce that. And so it would mean the town would need to dig up and put in a meter pit and install all those outside. So I'm hoping I'm retired by the time we get done. <laughs> the time we have to go back to Jeremiah's house, I'm thinking I'll be retired. So yeah, I had mine replaced two days after we moved in. So, but... Uh, When's your retirement date? Haven't figured that out yet. Oh. I've still got girls and another wedding to pay for, so. <laughs> should just remind them to leave and cause a divorce if married. Yeah. <laughs> Don't descend if you're married. Uh, well, I recommend it just in case. The retirement? Yeah. Um, while Troy and Mary are looking at that. Too many arguments against <laughs> Right. There's usually not too many arguments against retirement. <laughs> <laughs> None that I can find. Yeah, you don't get a lot of... So if you get into your retirement, then you will be working. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm guessing as your Vespa. Okay, what is that button supposed to do? Is give me something, Troy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I've read in the code is it's so restrictive that really I to me I've used this money to build a new inside cemetery. There's my my proposal to take this hundred and thirty three thousand and apply for building the new inside cemetery. Close it. Well when it was set up I imagine interest rates on investments were higher and cost of things were lower and they thought which in fun, yeah, you know, but yeah, that's that's gone away. There's no interest to be earned anymore. Yeah, I've never really understood. I I, I read the code when, when I took over the manager, and basically, this was established by the board many many years ago. I looked at what data it was, and at that time, 15 percent of the cell uh, cemetery lot sales went to this, and then annually only the interest that accrued off this investment go back toward operations of the cemetery. So that's how it was set up. So Could it have been part of the agreement when the cemetery was gifted to the town? Yeah, back in, I think I read that somewhere. back in the day, but that was many, many moons ago. Okay. Can we give it back? back? <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody to give it back to you <laughs> We'll get to this. Okay. So you're saying that... Uh, Five percent. Revenues that I tell we lowered it five percent low. Saying that the revenues that come off this investment are inadequate to provide for the perpetual care is, is that what I'm hearing or yeah. or the the interest off of the, uh, this money, we typically keep this a college trust. Uh huh. Only the interest can be used to, to offset costs in the, in the cemetery. That's a few hundred bucks a year on typical interest rates. That's why we took the. But that doesn't represent the total cost of maintaining the cemetery. Oh no, no, by any means. That no. that's being appropriated from the general fund, somewhere no, from the cemetery fund. It it all is self-sustaining, but the thing is, is we're we're dipping into our reserves from the cemetery fund. So if we go back to the cemetery fund, our what we bring in for revenues, which is our lot sales and our burials, and then we have the 50000 a year for water lease, that pretty much is wiped out by basic operations. So when you do any capital project in the cemetery, it flips it upside down. You're spending more than you're bringing in. And that's the only, you can't, the cemetery fund is almost like the water and sewer in the sense that it has to be self-funding. It's, a, it's, set up at, it's set up by code as special revenue. So special revenue funds are not... So is that a yes to, to my yes, question? Yes, it's, it's, it's restricted. You're not supposed to use general fund money toward this. So I guess the next question is how do you go about providing more income to the cemetery fund so that it's not eating up the fund balance? When you raise the rates, that's increase raise the, the barrel water rates. So we talked about that earlier. So I'm sorry. Increase the water lease. Increase water lease. So then you're going to have to increase the rates on the water fund. But you're taking more of the water. You're taking money out of the water fund. So well, you said we, uh, about your way to do it. So that we were doing this around the area. We are, we're we're burials, right? We've raised the, the burial and the lot in the close fees. Yeah, the the year, but we're still pretty next next pretty low. Yeah. They're much lower than most of the other things. Please, please, please. We did a question. We brought up a number of discussions at some point in time. So, to bring the cemetery fund income and expenses in line with each other. That means years ago, didn't we do a kind of a survey of what our costs were compared to others? We found out that people from out of town that had never lived in Platteville, never had anything to do with Platteville, were, were buying lots up there because it was so cheap. Mm -hmm. That's when we used to have the local fee yep. and an out of town fee. Yeah. And just a couple of years ago, we increased the out of town fee. Mm -hmm. I think if, if I remember right, don't, don't quote me. I think the, if I buy a lot, the local is a thousand, the non resident is fifteen hundred. Like yeah, something like that. You know, I'd have to look, but. That's uh, not next Tuesday, but the mm -hmm. second meeting in November, Mary, was scheduled up for discussion to be prepared for. 
But the cemetery fund is, uh, it, it, the cemetery is important to a ton of people. Trust me. We joke about giving it back, but in all ours, I mean. I get, I get a lot of compliments about how nice we have kept it. Um, I've had several people that have come up and said, you know what, for years it wasn't very nice, and for the last several years it's been good. Um, it's amazing to me. We have certain people that um, the public works crews have specific instructions that we do not do anything on that grave. I contact a family member if we think those flowers are too faded or something else that needs to happen because I do not like the phone calls that I get when we have removed what were very faded, older, uh, you know, fake flowers or something like that. But they they wanted to be the ones to do that, not not me. And it's amazing we can pick them up on Monday morning, and I've got somebody down here by Tuesday afternoon at the latest. Usually it's two, Monday morning by noon that I've got somebody there. It, 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 you just, as often as I'm up there, you wouldn't realize how many people are there on a very routine basis all the time. So, um, we, years ago, we had to pass rules for what could be put up there and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Lord, it was, yeah, there were more people <laughs> than you could imagine when it was a fight. And, well, and, and I mean, we have those rules posted at all the entrances, Mike, trying to, and, and we still get stuff that's not supposed to be up there, and when we do remove it, then I usually get a phone call. And what we have started trying to do is I take a trailer and just kind of set everything that's not supposed to be in there over in the trailer, because the first year or two, we went through and cleaned everything up, and we didn't have really anybody to contact or anything like that for those items. And so the faded flowers, the, the, the um, you know, flag of something, a Mickey Mouse or something that had blown from one grave out somewhere else and we had thrown it all into the trash. And all, I had people digging through the dumpster up there to find their pieces. So we now set it into a trailer, give it 30 days, and then if we haven't heard from somebody in that 30 days, then we're gonna, Go ahead and discard it, but and yeah, we're, we're the, the least expensive, but we're also the least restrictive. Most of the trades I've found, yeah, most of them won't allow headstones. Yeah, right. yeah. So, what I've done is this just remind me we're going to tomorrow, but Larry, to get to your point, which I think is a great point, the way to increase revenues is to increase lot sales and open close fees. That's a board discussion coming up in the November. Uh, water tower lease, that's for Sprint and whatever else I can give to the tower to, to, to lease space to bring money into the cemetery. Right now, the, the water tower is pretty much full. Yep. There's not much room out there. Uh, I mean, we're almost in a situation where we're obligated to make it self-funded. Yeah, so my idea is so for... The, if, it, if you're depleting the balance, the only answer is to raise revenue. Either that or in expenditures, what do you cut out? Right now, we have a portion of public works salaries, a portion of a percentage taken out of the cemetery because we spend time, public works spends time, by right. the cemetery. We can adjust that percentage, make it less. We can take insurance and bonds out, workers' comp, longevity, put that in the, in the general fund. I mean, there's ways to work it, just depends on how you want to work it where it's really an operations fund only. Well, right, and I see the point. The other side of the coin is that by keeping all those expenses in there, the comp, so on, it's, you're reflecting the actual cost of the maintenance. There's a lot of cost up there. Mm -hmm. I mean, because some of it's salary, some of it's, um, Expenses that accompany salaries, para, mm -hmm. insurance, what have you. Um, and <coughs> if it's supposed to be a standalone fund, then let it be one. But don't let it get some kind of special treatment mm -hmm. over it, the costs involved. If you know, bill it for. What it costs, salaries, yeah. 
fuel to get there and back or whatever the other costs are. I mean, you can legitimize, I mean, you can prove all of that. Right. Um, why let it skate? Why get it, let it get some, some kind of preferential treatment? Um, because really, if you transfer those expenses out to make the balance look better, well, it's having a negative effect somewhere else. It'll hurt the it'll hurt the general fund by whatever we take out of this. Right. Do you think that twenty seven thousand for the administrative fees is a legitimate number? I have to look, David. Uh, uh, we're talking we're talking twenty seven thousand in the cemetery fund. Yeah. I mean, do I think it's a legitimate number? Um, it's, a percentage. It's, it, it's just like anything else when you allocate. Okay. You think? So what we do is we take the administration costs in the general fund. We take the building and grounds cost in the general fund, and we give a percentage of that water to a cemetery. Um, I think there's one other one. Library. Too. Library. Yeah, thank you. Um, water and sewer take the biggest percentage, and I think library, I think, is 4%, and I think cemetery is 1%. So it's pretty low as far as the percentage goes to, you know, the ladies up front there, they do a lot of you know, they handle all of the uh, phone calls as far as, as far as the scheduling and stuff for it, so they can put time into that. So what was the question? No, no, I'm, I'm just explaining, yeah, and I guess the answer to that would be yes, I do feel it's a legitimate number for that, and that it's not being overcharged. Um, but it's all about the allocation, right? And, um, yeah, I kind of just pick its basis to go off of, I think it's around. <coughs> Finding more revenue would be the easiest thing. Would, Going into 2021, right, people are just that. dying to get in there. So you, you know, just charge your gambling campaign. campaign, campaign, campaign. <laughs> yeah. But right now, we're looking at around 25,000 in expenses or revenue in the cemetery. So if you look at the bottom number, your income balance, how we went from about 102,000 down to about 57,000 in fund balance. So yeah, it's an issue. Yeah, and and. I mean, something needs to be done with it before it goes to zero. I'm not going to disagree with that. So I'll bring that to the board as far as increasing revenue for block sales and and uh, open close fees. Those are the two big revenues right there. Take another part part of the back row out of the ten thousand. You decide not to. This is the tree trimming. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's you know any kind of maintenance would justifiable. We talked about taking that, and I told David it won't hold it. It won't hold the cemetery, so we didn't take that out. That's a donation from the town to the cemetery. It's back to all three. <laughs> but yeah, these are our two biggest ones here: the lot sales and the overclose. Every time I hear anybody want to put up some kind of a tower or come to Plato, I, I automatically take the cemetery. Mm -hmm. But on top of those, those towers between Sprint and Telos. And I think there's one other, I think Phil Rice. Skybeam. Yep, yeah, Skybeam. It's, it's full. There's yeah, we really there. don't have any room on the small tank, and nobody wants to go on the big tank because, well, a combination of the trees and all the antennas that are on the small tank block the view of town <laughs> from the big tank. Yeah. So it's too bad that we weren't on the big tank before because there's a lot more room on that that we probably could have done it. But at this point, that's so. I, mean, I really don't want a bunch of towers. So yeah. But it's just reusing what's already up there. People don't even notice it. All right, so cemetery was more reapproach. Yeah. 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 Um, this has to do with your street expenditures that we okay. looked at earlier. Um, in the maintenance of tradition, mm -hmm. apparently there's, correct me if I'm wrong, about $100,000 which was originally budgeted for this year that wasn't expended. Is that, um. am I reading that right? You're on streets, Larry? Is that where you're at? I am. Okay, give me a half a second to get there so I'm sure. looking at the same thing. I must have gone right past it. 
I know we, there was some discussion of it last night. That some of the appropriations that were budgeted for 2020 they were not expended. Is that okay? Yeah, you're looking at the 350 versus the 150 that we're anticipating spending. Is that correct? Um, Yeah, because the 350 was what was budgeted in 2020. We're projecting 150. That's because um, we didn't do the the chip seal. Um, now I'm not sure. Are we using part of these funds to pay for the Mark Marietta upgrade, or is that all capital improvement? All capital improvement. Okay. So yes, at this point we didn't. We we just are finishing up the patching, the eighty thousand dollars in patching that the board approved, and. Um, we didn't go ahead and try and schedule the chip seal in before the end of the year. We're anticipating trying to do that next year. Right. So the 100000 that we're showing for next year, I expect will increase tomorrow night when we have some more discussion when Troy goes through the capital projects. So that number will probably go back up for next year. So, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, okay. Uh, we have unexpended money that was budgeted for 2020 correct left over in the budget or money that we planned on spending on gypsy or whatever the budget bill in total right the project was but it wasn't done correct and, and i understand the reason the covid and all um, to the uncertainty over our income sales tax and so on um, so that money is basically being included in the 2021 budget. Oh, no. You pushing that hundred thousand into the budgeted expenditures for maintenance condition on the streets in the coming year. It, 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 this is all nice conversation. It's going to be well, right. But, we, but, it, but is that how it's being looked at? How it's being. That it's basically rolling over into the 21 budget? Yes. That's my understanding, yes. Okay. We're going to decide what, if that's true or not tomorrow night. We're going to make it. Uh, understood. And the, let me summarize this one. When I started, we typically had 40000 in basic condition for just basic patching. And that was our only capital fund we had when I started. And as we implemented other funds like the sidewalk fee and the capital fund, fund, that changed. But over the years in this fund, for several years we bumped to 50000 then we went to 80000 The last year we put 100000 in for basic condition for patching or just general street maintenance. It could be anything. It could be, you know, special special project or just town patching. So I built that hundred thousand back in because that's typically what we've done. And then tomorrow night we'll we'll discuss do we want to put chip sealing in this fund? Do we want to do another road project in this fund? And by doing that, you're gonna shrink your 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 balanced budget right now, you're about 245,000 revenues or expenditures. So the more projects you add, you're going to shrink that balance to zero. And then once you get negative, you're going to be start dipping into your reserve funds. And that's mm -hmm. what we'll talk about tomorrow night. Because I want to use, I want to ask the board tomorrow night to use reserve funds for next year. Talk about going broke. How, how are we doing on revenues? I mean, as far as tax, tax revenues, are we doing okay? Yeah, we go back up to you know, you were giving us that monthly what we were uh, again before and what we have in, over the since COVID hit. We budgeted for about a little over 2.8 million in revenues. We're projecting uh, a little over 1.3.1. Uh, sales tax, which go up, it is actually stronger than I thought it would be as long as it ends mm -hmm. in. We have one month under 100,000 okay. in monthly okay. sales tax. And this this past month it went back up over a hundred thousand. And, and it's in the the rears, right? It's like it takes you two or three months before that. Kind of a two month lag. It's two months in the rears. Yeah. yeah, two month lag. So and I look at the previous three years of fall revenues with holidays and this and that, and 
it, your tree will is fairly consistent. It doesn't really dip a whole lot in the fall. And so that is one key factor I look at. Uh, it's actually way down, but uh, Dave noticed uh, we had a large contribution last month. This, this well, month. it's going to be coming in October. Um, so we book we book it the month before we receive it on property taxes, but typically we wouldn't have hardly any property taxes right now. We have hundred thousand dollars coming in next month because so many in the rivers. Well, the big extension is after that. big happen. Yes. Oh, big extension. Uh, and the meeting that's a week from tonight, the financials will be on the, uh, not on the consent agenda, they will be on exactly. the action item. Please, thank you. So, go back to Troy's question is, you know, so right here, I'm looking at, conservatively, if all the numbers are correct, we're going to be looking at 750000 in revenue projections over what we're spending. Just this year, 2020. That's our budget, right? For no. That is total no. revenues minus total expenditures. Right, exactly. Going into this year, we're looking at dipping into reserves, and you know, we're, we do a balanced budget first, and then we say, okay, how much, if any, do we want to do big projects and dip into reserves? And that's where you, you take your, your your total bottom line. But that doesn't account for like the two hundred and fifty thousand that we did spend. Well that's in the streets fund, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that two fifty would show up in the projected side. Right. That one twenty two assumed we were gonna spend it. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Cause we define balance budget because we have to submit to DOLA the stated balance budget. So though in that, in that one page letter I give them is my summary of the budget. And if I miss that, they'll call me because they have to have that. Mm -hmm. So the way I do it is, is we set the balance budget. Right now we have a draft balance budget. You have 245000 more revenues and expenditures. It's balanced. Then our definition of balance is revenues minus expenditures and you incorporate reserves. The only way to use reserves, like David knows, is you have to overspend your budget. You have to become unbalanced. I know it's hard for non-government people to think, but that's how we work in government. Yeah, exactly. The state considers reserves plus reserves are considered a revenue for the state purposes. But, um, you guys are doing it appropriately, in, in my opinion. Whereas you try to balance it for operations, use your reserves for your capital. That's what your reserves are there for. Um, exactly how you should do. You know, I always get those talks, you know, especially if we, I mean, we've never been over budget the last 12 years. We've always had revenue, more revenues and expenditures. And, you know, like last year we had $863,000 more revenue than we had expenditures. This year we're anticipating $750,000 more revenue. So that's what builds our reserves. Because then, kind of like a special revenue fund, I start from scratch. You know, we establish our revenues, we establish our expenditures, and we leave the, the fund balance alone. So I try to offset every year that we only spend what we bring in back this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. And then, like tomorrow night is when we look at, okay, now what's in the savings account? Tomorrow night's the savings account conversation. And how much do you want to spend it then? So, if that makes sense. And uh, people ask me about special revenue funds. It's like, well, if I if I find Daryl Phillips, I own 20 homes. Each one's a special revenue for me. So I only use two or five regrows, one of my rentals of 20. Whatever I bring in revenue-wise and whatever I spend on that home is separate account. And then I have my general checking account and my savings account. And people relate to that. They just don't understand what special revenue funds are. This additional fund balance, is that I know we have to save three percent of our budget, right, for like emergency purposes. Is that, isn't that a state yeah. mandate? Dave still, Dave still has to put the paper, which is that. Is, but that's not this. But this extra balance, that's not that, right? This is, that three percent is saved in a, in a separate fund. Is that true? Okay. It is saved in a separate fund. Is it? Is it? Is the three percent taken out of the I mean, extra so you, balance that we're building up? So you're supposed to have a three percent emergency reserve, right? So that qualifies our 
our year versus two reserve. Um, so yes, technically that 2.8 has a 3% embedded in there, but we'll break that out. Kind of a, if you wouldn't mind, Troy, clicking on the one that says in general. It's not a line item. So if you would scroll down to the bottom, please. Yeah, so it's the one that I'll show. I'll show you kind of here what. Where is that? Only the summary. These are the summary one. Okay, yeah. Um, so if we see here, what did I do? <laughs> Go down to the bottom. You don't have it built in yet. I don't quite have it built in yet, but this is well. Where's Tabor? Is Tabor not in there? He hasn't put Tabor in yet. I haven't put Tabor in there yet. Um, that's where it's going to go. Is to show you kind of that line item for Tabor, um, so that you get an idea of that that's what that's reserved for. And as well, um, there was stuff where it showed what stuff had been earmarked for where you can get down to a real reserves available for consumption today. So that, like, if you could scroll down on that one, please. So like, for instance, there's public works reserve, right, at 502. So eventually we get down to saying, well, you actually only have about 1.9 million to do stuff like street repair or Anything like that. And I think that's kind that's of what, what I was, we're that's asking. That's exactly what I was trying to. Ask. Yeah, and so the table will be called out there. Yes, well we have four million, things. but we can't spend all that four million. Right. Yes, yeah. yes, that's right, and that's what this page shows hey. too. But all these call trust or accounts are really unrestricted. It's not an enterprise fund. That's not the the sewer fund. We just earmark these to reserve this money for special projects. All this money could be part of just the reserve fund. But that's not how I work the budget, because I want to make sure projects get done, so we put us in. A year or two ago, I asked the board to reallocate money from the general fund call trust that we just stack away as a, as a savings account and put portions of that into these different funds to build them up. So when the time comes, we build a PV, or we build a public works for the shop, or whatever, or the downtown improvements. So I could take all this 768 240F downtown premiums, get rid of that, put it all in public worship, please. Okay. Yeah. Well, we still need to incorporate. The only thing we don't have here is what the table is. That would actually be what we can't spend. These we can spend. The table yeah. we can't. The table is going to be We could say yeah. tabers 200000 We could spend like $1.6 but we can't touch that 200000 And tabers actually, I think, only like 80000 That is not much. Fire station reserve. That it, we okay. renamed it, it. It's the police station reserve. Oh, okay. Because we used to have like some money set aside to buy the old fire station that we, the board opted not to pursue that contract and build a PD next door. When the time comes. Do you guys see that there's new occupants in the fire mm -hmm. in the old fire? Yeah, house? That, 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 that okay. Mm -hmm. They're doing pretty well. It's all over next door, too. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, they're doing pretty well. Yeah, the two in. Yeah, the two Where are you? Are you driving the budget stuff? Can I ask you a separate question? Sure. Um, you had said we would see the draft for the Platteville Business Relief Program at the first meeting in October. Um, that happen. Sorry, I haven't had time to talk to the board about that. Eight and I have had this conversation. And we're not going to do our own grant program because we have to basically have duplicate identical what the county's doing through the state of Colorado. And the money we get is very nominal compared to what the county's getting out of the businesses. So, so the perspective of the business is I have the Blackville grant to apply for or I have the World County grant to apply for. I can easily apply for the World County grant and get $10,000. But the money that Platteville has available, it might be 2500 or less. So why would I even go after Platteville's grant? So if we just put it all in the World County Fund, then we can get reimbursed for all of it and more business to pay off. I just received an email today. I don't know if you did or not. I didn't check the receipt list. 
from Don Warden. Uh, at three o'clock Thursday, I have my next call with all the officials. I think you're on there. Yes. But in his email, Don said that they're 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 the platform donates like we did. Mm -hmm. That that money is solely for platform businesses, first come first serve, yeah. solely for platform. So it's fair. But what he also emphasizes is if platform businesses don't apply for that pot that we donated, it goes back. Nobody gets it. So we have to encourage our platform businesses to apply for this money so they can basically get our donations. And right now the businesses are waiting to see what platform is going to do. So we need to get information. We need to get that information out to because they still have almost three months. We yeah. need to get in December. Yeah, absolutely. I don't disagree with that. I just I thought we had decided the Well County program was restricted. We were going to try to run ours not as restricted. I found out that we, we could. Not the case. Now, not the case. We have to do what Well County is doing. Or what the upper upstate is <coughs> That's why most towns, when I saw that they sent, Don Ward sent the new spreadsheet today, a lot of towns like me, they're just doing all their allegations to Well County. I did submit David, uh, I did a spreadsheet with them on what we spent year to date on non budgeted COVID, you know, the like cleaning, and uh, we put some people on admin leave for, for a short time. That came out to around $36,000. That's what David, I was talking about that when this meeting started tonight. But it sounds like we'll get reimbursed for that full amount, if not most of it. And when I talked to the board about using a portion of that distribution from the coronavirus relief fund on some capital projects like upgrading the window to make it a service window or doing the election box, those don't qualify. No capital project qualify. But once you get the money back, you don't care how you spend it. So you know where I'm going with it. Once we get $36,000 back, I'm going to come to the board and say, where do you want to put this or can we spend it on something we wanted to do to begin with? So that's, that's, I don't know, Dave, I don't disagree with me or not, but this is kind of a game with the finances of, from the federal government, in my opinion. You can't really absolutely. use the money where you need it. No. I mean, absolutely. I would very, feel very comfortable and ethical to take whatever you wanted to do and try to push right up to that line yeah. um, as far as that goes. But, which means is maybe it's not don't make it fully capital type thing and look at how you do the project with that in mind um, and be open with them about how you did it, but so about how you explain it to them. Yeah, it is, absolutely. A lot of the problem with this was we didn't have the full story when trying to make a decision, which, yeah. is, which makes it really hard in trying to make a decision. So the more you, do, you dig deeper, the more it's revealed, the more it's like, oh, crap. Because when, the, when yeah. we talk to the board Spencer, and, I, and I'll take the blank this time, not the board, but those guidelines were still being debated. And my understanding is that, well, yeah, Wilcat is going to have a, a loan program for small businesses managed through upstate Colorado, and each town can do their own. Well, that sounded great, but then we found out from the CARES Act guidelines, we had to have exact same restrictions as what Will County was doing, which is adopting their the CARES Act restrictions, and that just blew us out of the water. Well, I think that's what the state's Dola said we had to do. Yep. So Dola, the state decided. So it, it's just not worth the time. I mean, it hurts your businesses because it takes more money technically away from them. So they can't get a county grant and they can't get a five grant. It can't be the same. They can get both, yeah. Cannot be both. So, sorry, I forgot to update the board on that. Focus on budget instead. Yeah. <laughs> and I just want to put this in your guys' minds and I'll, I'll bring it up tomorrow night. But I got a call from Jason Gerwell about a month ago now. He's the consultant from Playwell that the Park Trail and Trees Committee was working with to get the design on the playground. Yep. Um, and he had sat on the selection board for the GOCO grant as well. Um, he said that go he just wanted to see where we were at, what you know, basically get a pulse of what that project looked like and I told him it wasn't much right now, but um, he did ask me to to talk to the board or at least put it on their mind that Maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to look at just replacing the playground itself with town funds because there are multiple incursions of non-compliance with the current uh, playground that we have at Lincoln Park. And so that could potentially open us up to a liability you know, concern. I'm thinking, how much was the playground? 
because he, he does annexation and that kind of stuff. So, but yeah, that uh, you know, it's kind of a growth issue on several things: water fund, sewer fund, conservation trust, use tax. It's a growth issue. Not that promoting a ton of growth, but it's a fact. Do more than zero. Okay. Any other questions for tonight? Okay. Alright, is everything good on how the budget is being pre presented so far? We're not doing line by line by line. We're just discussing changes. Yeah. And so I'm asking you, I'm giving you a, a clean copy as of tonight. Of course, it has now changed a little bit. As of right now, because we tweaked a little bit. So tomorrow night we'll look at your capital improvement fund. That's going to be the main focus tomorrow night. And then capital projects are not just the capital improvement fund. They can be anywhere. So that's mm -hmm. the second part of the conversation for tomorrow night. And then we'll wrap up with wages. Okay.